Now, let me just now turn your focus on governance issues, uh, Mr. Kalaba. You've raised a concern over the presidential trips, even commenting, you know, on the president's uh, recent, you know, uh, trips, expected trips to, you know, Belgium as well as Rwanda. Why are the presidential trips an issue? Look, I think for me, uh, colleagues, if you remember very well, I have not been one that has been talking about foreign trips. I, because I understand the efficacy and the importance of those foreign travels. Therefore, I have really restrained myself. And when I comment, it is because it is genuine. Let's start, take, for instance, the trip that the president undertook to Rwanda, to, to Eswatini, former Swaziland. Eswatini is a country of roughly about 1.8, 1.9 million people. Let's say 2 million people. Uh, the kingdom people there hardly travel. Uh, if you can count, maybe there are only five in the last uh, year that traveled to Zambia. Maybe they came here for some sickness, for something to visit a relative. They don't usually come here for, for tourism. Now, when you have a situation where the, the president travels to Eswatini to go and do a memorandum of understanding with Eswatini, I get concerned, or we get concerned as a political party, because what MOU are you doing on tourism? Zambia's tourism right now is, stand, is standing at about 900,000 people visiting us per annum. If we want to increase those numbers, are you telling me Eswatini is the place for the president to go to, especially in desperate moments that our country is in? I thought the president would have spent more time in Angola if he wanted tourism, because economically Angola is strong. I thought the president would have taken time to spend more time, even in the DRC Congo, because uh, we have about 100 million people there. So it's the rationale of the president spending money when he's failing to buy medicines in hospitals, spending money to go to Eswatini, where we are going to get almost new benefits. So you're saying travel. the trip to Eswatini was misplaced? The what? Are you saying that the trip by the president to Eswatini was misplaced? It was very, very misplaced, extremely misplaced. Then the president goes to Kenya. There will be elections in Nairobi, in Kenya there, in the, in the coming six, seven weeks. There will be elections. And a new president will be ushered in because President Uru Kenyatta has served his two five-year terms. He's, and they are finishing in August. Any leader who's serious about strengthening bilateral relations will not go to a country where the leader is exiting. What they normally do is to wait until the elections are held, especially in this instance, Kenya is only having elections in the next six weeks. You wait for Kenya to have the elections. Then you quickly fly in to go either to attend the inauguration ceremony of that leader and you take advantage of having bilateral ties. And while there, you say, I'm inviting you to come to my country. Or we intend to come and take our relationship deeper. We intend to come back. But what commitment is President Uru Kenyatta going to do uh, that is going to preserve in the next only six weeks? So it is those misplacements that honestly worry. But beyond that, I want to draw your attention to 2008. Uh, sorry, sorry, before, before uh, you carry on, Mr. Kalaba, uh, still on, on, uh, yeah. on, on President Uru Kenyatta, uh, from, from the information that we definitely received is that it was at the invitation of the Kenyan president. Uh, with diplomacy and etiquette, it was the Republican president of Zambia expected to turn down that invitation and not show up despite that invite? There are several invitations that a leader gets uh, from across the globe. And uh, the job of a leader in any country sitting at, uh, at that state house is to weigh the efficacy and the affluence of those invitations. It's for them to see, is this invitation right now worthy? Can I use my diplomatic skills to carefully avoid it and uh, propose that because of the situation we're having in our country where we don't have drugs, currently I'm unable to travel. And I intend to travel as soon as I oversee the purchase of drugs in hospitals. And we remain committed as a country to our bilateral relations with you, Kenya. And, 
I mean, something like that would not have offended anybody. It doesn't mean when you're invited, you're supposed to go. The president was invited, if you are not aware. He was invited to go to Uganda last year in October to attend Uganda National Day to, to be the guest of honor. The president did not even respond to the Ugandans. He kept quiet. He didn't respond. He just kept quiet. He didn't travel there. So in the same breath, the fact that he snubbed Uganda in October last year, on the 9th of October, he should have said the same with uh, Kenya, knowing too well that either Raila Odinga or Ruto will be coming in as leaders of that country. We all know that. Now, I was giving you an example that in 2008, when President Barack Obama was elected as president of the United States of America, he was invited to go to Canada. And when he was in Canada, he was offered a luncheon. He declined to have that luncheon because he said he needed to attend to the economic crunch that was happening in the USA. Not that he was going to buy food for every household, but it's a leader showing commitment and showing to be a part of what his country is going through. President Haka in the Hichilem has failed to show concern for the many Zambians that are struggling because these foreign trips, as important as they might be, we are at the crossroads as a country right now. We are having so many challenges. We have gone for 10 months without medicines in hospitals. We have teachers right now. We have teachers who have been waiting to be employed, the 30,000 teachers. Up to now, it has not happened. We have 11,276 health personnel that need to be employed. The president should be overseeing that. We have farmers. Farmers were promised uh, 250 kwacha, a 50 kg a bag of maize by FRI to be, to be purchased. They have been given only 160 kwacha. These are issues that the president should take time to begin explaining to people. If I were him, if I were him, I would have skipped the Kigali, for instance, the Kigali trip. It's a Commonwealth meeting. Now, I want you to understand that multilateral meetings like the one which is happening in Kigali are very important, but at the same time, they don't really bring back economic benefits to a country immediately as, as compared to bilateral uh, meetings. So the president has opted to go to the Commonwealth. The president has opted uh, to go to the Commonwealth. He has gone to the Commonwealth just for sure. Nothing but just for sure. Zambia will get very little out of that. His Minister of Foreign Affairs would have traveled to the Commonwealth. He has, he has ambassadors uh, representing Rwanda who are domiciled in Kenya. They should have, uh, um, I mean, domiciled in Tanzania. They should have traveled to, to represent him, especially that Zambia is at the crossroads with all these kind of issues that we have. We expected the president to be more local than foreign as he is right now. What I'm saying is not just politics. You will have an opportunity to interview President Lungu and as, and as his minister, at one time when he traveled to, uh, to Lesotho, no, I think it's the same as what in Swaziland for the read dance thing. I declined to travel on that particular trip myself as foreign affairs minister because I'd given my advice at the time and I thought that we had just come back from a Swatini where there was a Sadiq uh, heads of state summit and that going back again to the same uh, kingdom country would not uh, be in the interest of the country. But he is president and uh, I, I was just an advisor and I was overruled. It's fine. But I am saying this to tell you that when I speak on matters such as this, it is not just politics. These are real matters because the farmers are bleeding. The farmers are counting on his leadership as president to hear him say, how come you have given us one sickest day? Because the cost of production is now more expensive than the cost of uh, what they're going to get out, out when, they, uh, when they sell their maize. These are serious issues which require the president to take interest, but he is not. All right, so now moving on to another issue. There's been a grave concern on the increase in defamation cases being reported. What is your comment on this particular issue? What cases are being reported? Defamation of the president cases being reported. Um, now, look, mm -hmm. these issues of defamation of the president, I think it is going out of hand. Clearly, uh, 
it's the president himself who is insisting behind the curtains that these things are pushed. We are now becoming a police state. There is no way anything you say in this country is this defamation of the president. Anything you talk about is defamation of the president. I take strong exception. I take strong exception to people that want to demean the office of the president. But I also take strong exception to a president who wants to gag all of us because he thinks he is almighty, he is untouchable, and he wants to make this country become a police state. Clearly, the way President Akainde Hichilema is proceeding, he wants to make Zambia a police state. Look, colleagues, just the other day, we heard this Minister of Defense warning people who will be talking about the defense forces, who were asking for monies, uh, their 100% uh, payment when they come from UN operations. That matter is in the public domain. That matter is in public domain. The president himself, when he was officiating at a pass out parade, uh, Chindwin, is it Chindwin? Yes, Chindwin Barracks in Cabo. He himself said, those of you who have been working in, the, in the, these UN deployments, when you come back, we'll give you 100%. That's what he said. So when he didn't give them 100%, and we questioned him to say, Mr. President, you said 100% you have not paid. You have made a promise. How does that become defamation? How does that become a security risk to our country? Because this is a matter which the president spoke about publicly. And because you speak about it publicly, we are going to challenge you publicly so that people know that you, you like telling half-truths. You don't want to tell the truth. So all these issues you are hearing, defamation of the president, right, left, and center. President Chiluva, President Chiluva, he was defamed right, left, and center by the media, by people, and so on and so forth. He only used to laugh at it and used to say, in Sele Mafuta, I thought he used to say himself, uh, Mafuta, you know, it's just the uh, oil and uh, it will not grow on my body and he would move on. I think he was doing that not because he enjoyed the insults, but because he realized that if you every other day you are arresting citizens of the country for this and that, no, because they have, uh, they have said that the president is not a Christian or oh, it is defamation of. Uh, of uh, of the president. I mean, look, you can tell me I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Muslim, I am a, a Freemason, I am a what? If I am none of those, I will not give it a hoot. Yeah? But I'm telling you because this defamation of this defamation of the president is too much. People are being guarded. The president must know that he, he is in the open space and everybody will talk about him. But we are saying don't defame him. Let's just criticize him with dignity. We don't have to defame him, but we have to criticize him the way I am telling him that he likes telling half-truths. The president has not been sincere. He, he is going to go down the history of this country as one incompetent person who talks more and does less.